You want to fuse a little more power into your swing? That may be as easy as one, two, three, uh, four. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. Bunky here, and today we're going to talk about timing to add a little more power into your throw, a little more pop, a little more pepper, a little more zip. A little, you get the picture. We want to throw harder. We want to throw farther. And before we get started, again, Salty Ute Disc Golf Apparel, Power Disc Golf Academy, Lone Star Discs, Putting Confidently, D Clip. All those links are in the description below. I couldn't do this without them they support me and sponsor me show them support with using the links down below and i'd appreciate that today we're going to talk about timing we haven't done this one in a little while but i think i need to revisit it so we are going to revisit it together a couple of lessons ago josh and i were working on this with me because i have a tendency to coil too soon and get to my full backswing too early and that does two things. Let me fix my camera and I'll show you. Okay, that does two things. Uh, I was getting into my coil as the step before my crossover, I was starting to coil. And then hitting my crossover, I was already to full backswing. Sorry, I was already to full backswing. And then I had this whole time to just sit back here and wait. And like I said, that does two things. It really dilutes the power, the energy that you've stored up in your coil if you have to sit there and wait because your body doesn't want to stay static. It wants to keep moving. When you're moving, your body wants to keep moving. So I either do two things. I either try to release too soon or I try to go back farther. Farther or further? Farther. I leaked power because I tried to go too soon or I was uncoiling a little too much or it caused a greater swoop because I got back to my full backswing and your body wants to keep going back until you release. And because I'm at full coil here, I can't, I can't physically turn anymore. What was happening was my arm was lifting up in the air as I was going into my plant and it was, a, it was causing a swoop for me or accentuating a swoop that was really already there. So I was leaking power and I was causing a swoop, which... If it's too big, swoops leak power too. So fixing my timing would make it so my throw is more powerful and more compact. And, and we all do this. I'm, I'm convinced that 95% of the amateurs that are watching me right now coil too soon and get to their full backswing too early. So there's two things that I wanna talk about really quickly today to help us fix our timing. The first thing is coiling later. We have to wait. We have to be patient. And I know we're not. We want to throw the disc. We, we want to get it done. We want to get it out of our hand. We're just so anxious to see this beautiful piece of brown plastic fly through the air. It's like being a kid at Christmas when your parents told you, we're not opening presents until 8 o'clock but your eyes pop open at five o'clock and you're thinking to yourself, I just need to rip the paper off of those presents right now. It's the same thing, but we have to wait. Make yourself wait, force yourself to wait. Watch the pros. I was watching the Beaver State Fling last night in post-production, uh, the last round, and they wait super late to coil. Like I, like even with going through the lesson with Josh, I thought I was waiting, but I'm still sooner than they are. So. How do we stop ourselves from trying to coil too soon? And for me, if you watched a little, I gave a little spoiler in my power four hour that I streamed a couple of weeks ago, I had to give myself a physical cue to tell my body, you cannot start coiling before this point and make it very obvious to my brain that that was the point that I was supposed to coil and not before. So I started counting. I started counting my steps. I have a five step approach and I count to four before I even think about starting my coil. And it looks something like this. Can you all see me here? Okay. One, two, three, four, coil. 
Okay? And I, that's how I practiced at home. That's how I practiced at home, saying that exact thing. One, two, three, four, coil. Okay? Uh, I don't do that on the course, so if you play with me in a round on a course somewhere in a tournament or in leagues, you're not going to hear me. I do it in my head, though. I do it. I have to because I need a physical cue. I need a hard cue or I'm going to start too soon. I have to force my body to wait. And if you're musical and you want to add an eighth note in there, you know, it could look like one, two, three, four, and coil. Okay? Just wait. Wait as long as you possibly can. You should not be coiling until this, this cross step lands and you're going into your stride and then you coil. Don't do it before then. It is too soon. You'll get to your full backswing too soon and you'll leak power or like me, cause a swoop. Practice that at home. Count out loud. Make sure that you're forcing yourself to wait later in your walk up to start coiling. The second thing that I needed to force myself to stop doing was coiling too quickly. I would just try to thrust my disc out because I thought, I think to myself, I need to do this fast. Like the walk up and the throw, it happens quickly, but you have more time than you think. You ever heard about walking around the disc, right? They tell you that your disc should, should stay in the same place. That is a, an optical illusion of something that's actually going on. Like if you watch the pros, it is. I just watched Simon and I watched uh, Paul as well, just before I started doing this video to make sure that I was seeing things right. But their disc seemingly stays in the same spot as they coil. A lot of people made videos on you have to walk around the disc. The disc can't move. That's, I'm going to say that that is not what is going on. And when, those, when the pros do it, they're not thinking I have to keep the disc in the same spot. What is actually going on is they are taking their time to fully coil as they're going through their walk up. Me, I needed to punch my disc out there as soon as possible so I could get back there and rip through it, right? That's not what we do because whereas the pros look like this, I look like this. <laughs> Yanni picked up on this early on and he told me you're, you're, you're focusing too much on reaching back. You're focusing too much on extending your arm. Stop focusing on extending your arm. That's why I don't like the term reach back and I don't use it. You can use coil, you can use backswing. Don't use reach back because you don't need to reach back. What you need to do is focus on coiling, coiling your hips back a little bit, but then coiling your shoulders. And it makes sense to me because if you watch Ricky and you watch Calvin and you watch Kristen, I think, Tatar, they do not fully extend their arms. Calvin is here. Kristen is really, really bent. Uh, Ricky is a little, a little more straight than Calvin, but not fully straight. So if they're focusing on reaching back, their arms would be straight. I almost guarantee their arms would be straight if they're focusing on reaching back. They're focusing on coiling. And if they're focusing on coiling, it doesn't matter really whether your disc is here or here or here or here. What matters is if your shoulders are here or here or here or here when you're coiling. So take your time when you coil. Like I said, you have from here all the way to here to coil. And it doesn't seem like long. And it probably in the grand scheme of things isn't long. But in the midst of it, it's like one of those things that it takes. It's like slow motion. It takes an eternity. So get into your X step and then focus on extending your coil, co taking this whole time to coil, right? Not getting to your X step and doing this and then stepping. It is get to your X step and as you're, co as you're taking your, your, your plant step, use that whole time to get and coil as far back as you can. Don't worry about where your hand is. Worry about coiling your shoulders. Once you get that down, then you can, I mean, then you can worry about where, where, your, where your disc is landing. But focus, I have to focus first on coiling my shoulders and getting that timing down. Because if I worry about where my disc is, I just push it back. And that's not what we want to do. So there you have it. Those are the two things that I'm working on right now to help my timing and getting me to my full backswing at the same time as I'm planting. 
because that is optimal. We want to hit here and here at the same time and then release all that pent up energy into one fluid motion, one fluid powerful motion. So delay your coil and be methodical in your coil. Those are two ways to help you get your timing back on track and get your throw more powerful. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope it helped. I hope you learned something new today that you didn't know or help, hope it helps influence you to improve your game. Put in the comments below what helps you with your timing. And uh, again, thanks for all your support. Thanks for watching and for coming along with me. Until next time, enjoy the journey. And here's your verse of the day.